Tamari tomato scientifically known as tamarillo is a fast growing tree that grows up to 2 to 5 meters. Its fruits can be eaten fresh by scooping the fresh half pieces or by sucking. Its life expectancy is about 12 years and they produce between 1 to 6 fruits per cluster. In Nyeri, the tree tomato grows well as the weather conditions is appropriate for their growth. A young farmer who has ventured into tree tomato farming gives insight and his vision in growing tamarillo for commercial purposes. He is happy that he ventured into the tree tomato farming as it is a unique plant in his agricultural expertise and it benefits both him and his consumers. Mr. Dennis has used the grafting method on his plants, thus boosting the growth of the tree tomato for a vast production. I'm Dennis Tomo Kanyugo. I'm 25 years by age and uh, I am the manager of this Alabama organic farm. How I came up with the idea is, immediately after you leave campus, there are so many challenges that one faces. One of the greatest challenges that graduates face is unemployment. And uh, I really wanted to become self-employed. So I had to rule out so many things so that I come with up with a project that will enable me become self-employed without relying on someone to employ me. Yeah. What motivated me is uh, if you look at other, other, other crops, yes, they do well, but you cannot do other crops majorly for commercial use. That's why I'm, I'm engaged in tree tomato so that it will make me become commercial and financial able. Tree tomato is a unique plant to me. Reason being, it can create employment to me. Secondly, it's something that you'll see. You'll, 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 you don't need to wait for five years so that you can have, have, your, have, your, have your first harvest or something of the sort, but something that you can see it grow. Yeah. My work with farming, as, I, as you know, I'm a medic. So most of the time, me, most of the time I take night shifts so that most of the daytime I'm, all, I'm always free and to, to do my part-time job. Normally, mm, tree tomatoes, are on average, that is according to the basis of research, if you do the grafting one that I know are far more of, normally the first, the first harvest is normally minimal. Reason being because of challenges of flowering, challenges of drought and everything. But as you go, progress, the, the, chance, the, 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 the yield increases. But at the first, we work with an average of 6 kg, 85 kg annual yeah. per plant. Locally, here in Nyeri, 1 kg is going at 8 shillings. But I have also contacted another person in Nairobi, told me if you can be able to take the produce over there, the produce there, a kg goes for around 140, 130, depending on. Remember, the places in the market fluctuate up and down. Start, you start by having a nursery. Remember, you have two nurseries. One of them, remember, if you look at a tree, for example, this one, this tree, the, the mother plant is a tree tomato, is it? But down here, the taproot is something called althama. Althama is something we call in Kikuyu, we know it Mothakoa. Mothako. That's why we call this one Mothako tree tomato, grafted tree tomato. You start by having the seedlings of this one. I'm going to take you to the nursery. You also have the seed bed of this one. When both of them are to a maximum size of about four inches, four inches, you can now transplant them to a paper. I'm going to show that the whole of that process. When you transfer them to the, that paper, both of them have to germinate and have to be having stamina. And if, if you can look at the difference between the both of the, the grafting between the both of them when they are separate, you can see some of these red oratia that I have, this side, these are mine that are grafted. They are healthy and they, they, they mature so fast because at the initial stage, you already have a, a strong a strong tree tomato, a strong althama tree and a strong tree tomato. When the, you graft them, maturity starts and it sprouts so fast. The initial stages, after you have transplanted both of them to the to the papers, you give them a span of about one week or two weeks. Until you can see, by virtue of seeing them, that they are healthy, 
no they they can go they had a, they can had a go through the we call it surgery in family they can had a go through that process whereby you now start you prepare your your equipment during grafting which includes most of them have to they include just a simple scalpel and a, a grafting tape with this with the grafting tape and the scalpel you have to maintain remember in grafting you can graft 100 t tomatoes but the on, the one that are going to heal up and they can be taken to the farm they can be 10 so grafting stage is so key another interesting thing about grafting is that you see this 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 tea tomato if you get the the seed the seed rings the seeds from this tea tomato the seeds even if you germinate them they are not grafting they are not grafted you have to undergo those through this process that is a very key important thing that you need to note about grafted tea tomato so when both of them are mature and uh, you can now use uh, i normally use a single or two that i have trained that i have trained through that skill of grafting i have trained them like one or two weeks because if you don't train them you end up having losses you train them after you train them no no you can go with them i make sure that when we are doing the grafting part of it i am present by me we take an a, 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 um, the aldama plant the aldama tree then you slice it after you slice it you take these other the 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 the, the, the mother plant of this the seedling you also slice it then after you finish the grafting we wrap it with uh you can use a poison paper the reason as to why we wrap it is to minimize transpiration remember you have all you have caused an injury to that plant that was germinating now if it loses so much water it will end up drying up so we lap it after we lap it then you give it about two weeks then you unlap after you unlap then you give up about one week so the process of grafting is from the seed from the seed bed all the way to the plant all the way to the transportation of the that seed that, that tree tomato to the farm is approximately one month without haste because if you have if you happen to have haste definitely that tree tomato will not do good even in the farm after pla after transporting them you already have planted you already have prepared the land you have put manure you have dug two by two and two feet down you have put manure like one bucket that is you are using if you are using mm, cattle manure but if you are using chicken manure you can use have a bucket then you mix properly then you can now savory a day before transplant transplanting that particular tea tomato you need to water that 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 dish that you're having so that when you bring the tea tomato it's just go go well yeah the chicken manure it has more ammonia that, rather than the cattle the cattle that's why you, the cattle manure you use at least one bucket so that you can make sure that this tea tomato will be having the relevant nutrients that it requires but for chicken manure you can use have a bucket it's it is going to be good the weeding process at the initial stage is so much key because these weeds that you are seeing they compete with that particular tea tomato that you have planted so at the first the three the initial stages of planting tea tomato you have to do extensive weeding and at that time because of uh, reducing the number of the number of uh, laborers you'll be having in your farm you can we, we, i i did myself i did mulching per plant so that you conserve water and also reduce the cost and you, with mulching also it also deters uh, deters with, with germinating around the plant the spacing of tree tomato is a uh, four four by four if you look at this tree tomato here if you take a ruler or we take an inch from here to here it has to be four from here to here it has to be four from that Tea tomato to that tea tomato it has to be four the reason is so simple when these tea tomatoes this is their first year with uh, the second year with subsequent years these branches will have to to have space for them to to be supported so that they don't they don't fall off there's the grafted one and there's the non-grafted one the grafted one we sell them at 100 bob per seedling the non-grafted one we sell them at 50 bob per, per seedling yeah bunch of around 500 tomatoes that I bought. 
they are not they are not so bad off but they are bad off because they are one month earlier rather than the one that, that i grafted the, by myself and you can see they are yet to go and go through the ripening stage and those that i that uh, that, that that i that I, that I grafted myself they have already ripened they are they are ready for the market yeah <music> One, grafting reduces the lifespan of maturity. It, 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 an ungrafted takes two years, that is 18 months, but when you do gra the grafting, it's about even the eighth month, you can even, do, you can even see the flowering stage. Another advantage of grafted is that they are indigenous. Remember the, 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 the taproot. That's why you just require the initial three months for watering. From there, this, the taproot of the, gra of the grafting We'll do the search, we'll just search the waterfall itself. Yeah, yeah. The last one is that with the grafting, it, it does not have, it is not prone to so many diseases. Yeah, those are the very major reasons as to why we do the grafting. Materials of what is in the farm is here. The raw material of grafted tree tomatoes are here. This is what we call the Althama tree, and this is what we call the Red Orasia oil. The tree tomato. When you graft, when you, when you use the use this one as the tap root, you use this one as the mother plant. When you join them, both of them, that is what you have seen in the field. The disease is we have only one major disease that affects this tree tomato, and that disease is usually caused by lack of watering. That disease is called aphids. And the way we treat that disease, we just use pesticides. And if you spray it with the pesticide, there's no, disease, there's no other disease that you're gonna face with the tree tomato. The disease can even, if, you, if, if you're lazy, that is, you don't, if, if you don't have the, the pesticides itself, you can use water. And because that disease does not like water at all, you can use water as its remedy. Either way, you can also use us, you can also use the pesticide. How, how does it spend? It spends with a, within, if you don't water your plants within a span of a, let's, let me say a week, it can really spend far. This is an indigenous plant. And this is the taproot. This is the, what is going to that soil. This one is going to fetch for itself. Remember, remember originally, the tree tomato is fibrous in nature. Whereas the althama is taproot in nature. For, tree tomato, for the tree tomato, if you plant it when it is not grafted, it just absorbs what is just around. That is why that is when you require to do the soil analysis and all all that. But this one with the grafting, we don't require to mind about soil. And in fact, my first say tell us that's a lucky place. Can a farmer do tree tomato together with other kind of crops? You can, but there is only one limitation. When they are minute, when they are small, you need not to plant uh, a crop like maize. Reason being. It has pollen. The pollen grain will, lay, will land on the on the the tree tomato, which is at a, at, a, at a younger age, and that one can even make it to wither or something. Yeah. It flowers on the ninth month, ninth to eighth, eighth to ninth month. That span. Yes. So that the ninth month and the tenth month is ripening. What about the non-grafted one? Non-grafted takes eighteen months, eighteen to nineteen months to flower. To flower. 
aside from tree tomato farming, Mr. Kanyugo also rears poultry for commercial purposes. He says that poultry is of great benefits towards his farm and the chicken manure has nutritional value to his tamarillo plantation. Poultry is so much simple. It's as simple like putting a meal on the table. Poultry, you just need to get... There are three things that are involved in poultry. One, you need to get something called the breed. Secondly, the feed. And thirdly, your praise of your 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 praise of putting the pot the the, the, the chicks it just requires the three for you have to get you can get a good breed of the chick you get a bad uh, feed the feed that you're going to use and, and uh, you end up having a roast you can have a good breed of the chick you can have a good breed of the feeds but now when it comes to your area of pottery you don't maintain hygiene you are, you are, you, you, it is not well ventilated, then you end up having a roast. How I manage the two, you know, I remember I told you in the farm, this chicken manure, you just have to use, have a bucket of this. So, so at times, the manure, I use them and I put them into my farm. So, it's mutual, mutual benefit. They give me manure, the manure I take, them, I take it to the farm. This is for commercial purposes. They are at four, these are 500 chicks. They are on their fourth week. So in their fifth week, they'll need to be going. I have another, in my brooder there, I have another 500, 500 chicks. In total, I layer about 1,000 chicks. So that after every three weeks, I'm in Kosoko. After every other three weeks, I'm on the market. This one is a bit somehow higher in comparison with the tree tomato. Because this one you need to buy literally everything. I have not gone to that stage where I can make my own feeds. So you, I buy the feeds, I buy the chick. You see? Estimate um, the cost, how much can it take you? Like 500 requires about around, roughly around 150,000. To maintain and to keep? To maintain and to keep. If you are talking about 1,000, you need around 300,000. You know, the goodness with the chick is that you can make some broad profit within a very respected period of time. For example, the reason that's why I'm saying so is because if every three weeks me, I'm going to the market. If every three weeks, I'm going to the market. So you can look at that span of making money. It's good. There are two challenges. One of them is market. Sometimes you have layered the, the, the cheek, they have attained the required weight, but now the market that you have somehow and the profits are so much minimal. But that is at layer cases. And the other challenge that we find is pottery diseases just that yeah but pottery diseases are manageable when you have when you maintain hygiene these chicks just require hygiene and nothing else As a young agri-entrepreneur, he complains of brokers and middlemen who sell the wrong seeds or even buy at low prices, which disappoint farmers in the long run. Self-employment is the best job that you ever get. Don't ever, if you have a way of getting away of being employed, the better and the lucky for you. You'll assess ma you'll amass ma wealth, you'll also be, you'll also be free most of the time. Remember that this job does not require me to report to someone. I'm my own boss. That's the most, the, the greatest advantage that you have. Another thing, it's only in agriculture where you can get something used to call in business supernormal profits. It's only here you get an abnormal curve. That is production and supply. You get an abnormal, an abnormal curve and an abnormal profits. So to the upcoming farmers, one thing I want to tell them is that don't believe in Facebook. 
secondly, have a farmer. That's why I, I recommend Farmers TV. They come to the ground. They come and see the farmer themselves. They can see something that you have. You see, don't 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 have those cartels that say I sell I sell seedlings from here. I sell seedlings from here. Tell them to 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 show them your farm. Show us your farm. Then we'll buy. Yeah, that's because I'm also a victim of that. I came without knowing that you can fall at the cartels who sell who sell the seedlings that are not to the standard. Like for example. If you look at that other side of my, my, my farm, that other side, I bought those three tomatoes from someone, 500 of them, selling at 150. You can imagine. And if you look at the production of that side and the production of my side, it's totally different. So to the young upcoming farmers is that you need to research. Don't just guess, you know, someone tells you that cabbage farming, is, it, has, it has got money. Before you go to that cabbage farm, or before you go to that farming that you want to indulge yourself in, first of the most important thing is that you need to research. Secondly, you also need to be, you know, the problem with us young people, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't view this, some of these TVs that deal with farming and agribusiness. Be a friend of that TV, because I'm also part of the beneficiary of this, your program. So, that upcoming farmer, genuine, have a genuine farmer who will give you the necessary information that you need. Secondly, get the best seedlings from the desirable person. Yeah, and that's all. And that desirable person must be Althama Organic Farm. The Althama Farm on a piece of two acre land promises Mr. Kanyugo great produce. He visions himself having a large tract of land, farming tree tomato for commercialization, and also offering employment to the people around his community.